Welcome. Welcome while you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we are delighted that you have welcomed us in your home. You know, we would love to hear from you. So today we're taking your questions and your comments to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So the question for today's show is this. What does the feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross mean for you, mean for you and your church personally? So which is important? Now we in Catholic Church in our tradition, we all have a crucifix in over the altar in most parishes and which is beautiful as we go into church and we we see he is high and lifted up. We're at the cathedral. He, he is high and lifted up and it is a way for us as we come in is to bless ourselves with holy water, to genuflect before we go into the pew before the tabernacle and the cross. Well, what does all that mean? If that's just a bunch of religion. No, those are postures of our surrender to the exaltation of the cross, right? And, and those are just simple, very simple things that we do to say, Jesus, you are Lord, and I surrender. And I know the price that you paid mm. that I would have an intimate relationship with you here on this earth, and then the price you paid for me by God's grace and mercy to get into heaven. It's the cross, the power of the cross. So the exaltation of the cross of Christ is this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so it's a kind of twofold uh, thing, remembering Saint Helena, mm -hmm. mother of Constantine, who made pilgrimage to uh, Jerusalem, working with uh, the bishop or the patriarch of, of Jerusalem and discovering the cross of Christ buried under uh, s some worship to, to Venus, I think mm -hmm. it was. And, and people knew that under there was, was the burial site you know, of our, our Lord. And, there may be the cross there. And so she discovers mm -hmm. the true cross of Christ, we believe. Um, and then it's the building of a basilica there. And I think the basilica was um, named Martyrium and the shrine was named Calvarium. And then it was sacked. Mm -hmm. Those places were sacked by the Persians in 614 and then uh, re retaken uh, by the Christians and it was rededicated on 1,149, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So mm -hmm. it's not a history, so it's the remembering of this, the discovery of the cross, which you can see pieces of that, I believe, in the Church of Santa Croce in Rome, and then also uh, in Santa Croce in Jerusalem. So that's the historicity mm. of this, and so we celebrate that right. every, you know, every year. And then, of course, there's, as you were saying, Joy, the devotion, the exalting of the cross of Christ, on which the Prince of Glory died. Um, so we want to discuss that today, and it's really awesome ways that we could be doing that. What are we doing to honor the Lord and his, his crucifixion on our behalf? That instrument of torture, that instrument of, of death, that instrument of capital punishment. And uh, the he instrument of victory. <laughs> right, he transforms it into the uh, instrument of victory. Mm. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, mm. where is your sting? Mm -hmm. The sting of death is sin, but praise be to God who gives us life, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This transformation of, the, of that which was, was cursed be the one who hangs upon the cross, mm -hmm. is what the Jews said. It's a cursed thing. And, and the Greeks said, this is totally folly. This is nonsense. This doesn't make sense. So we want to discuss this today more fully meditate upon the cross of Christ. So again, it's this Saturday, you have time to do some meditating, exalting of the cross of Christ on which the Prince of Glory died. What does the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross mean for the church? What does it mean for you personally? Mm. We'll be right back, plenty more to come, don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, thank you for welcoming us into your home. You can email us with your questions to jimandjoy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So this is the question because this weekend as we Saturday, prepare and Saturday. get our hearts ready for Mass next weekend, what does the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross mean for the church and for you personally? And uh, so we have this feast day that it is ever before us that we as a people of God are journeying with great hope in the anticipation of heaven for ourselves when our journey on this earth yeah. is done. You could go out to EWTN forward slash exaltation of the cross and there's a great ebook and it's going to guide you through the passion, through the death, through the burial and then the resurrection of Christ. So, the, you, Joy, the book is ebook is wonderful. Yes. But that whole website is is just tremendous in terms of the history of this feast day, the rediscovery of the cross, uh, the basilica being established, re-established after being sacked, and then what does it mean to exalt? What does it mean to devote yourself to the cross of Jesus Christ? So go to the website. It's wonderful for you personally. You see a beautiful image there mm. of Jesus. What does, what does the exaltation of the cross mean? This should be something you should do as a husband and a wife with your children so that more and more we could exalt the Lord and his work upon the cross. Thank God for EW10 and all the wonderful teaching. Any feast day, any saints day, there's a, a web link there, a website there, so that you can go deeper with the Lord. Study to show yourself approved unto the Lord. And it's important as, as we celebrate it as a church, but then what are we doing personally? And so do you have a crucifix in your home? So and do you ha are they in every room? Are they on your mantle? Is it a place where for you, as you are in your home, as Mother Angelica would always say to us, the holy reminders. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a crucifix, we have a beautiful little nave, and we have the beautiful cruci yeah. n beautiful uh, crucifix there, a niche, I'm sorry. Um, and there's a beautiful cross there, we have a little candle there, and, and as we do our morning prayer time, there he is, yeah. reminding us not to pick out your cross, but to take up your cross, mm -hmm. Jesus said. And mm -hmm. so you know what? All of us in our lives have crosses, and they're all different for each and every yeah. one of us. Yeah. But it's how, when you look upon the crucifix, that you unite your sufferings, your sorrows, your miseries, your yeah. joys, your hopes to Him, yeah. so that in your life you are having an interior journey and your heart is being lifted up. And Jesus said, if I be high and lifted up, I will draw all men yeah. unto me. And so we, as a people of God, we have to make sure that Jesus is high and lifted up in our own lives, in our hearts, in the, the witness of the crosses that we're bearing in our own lives that yeah. we have to bear for him. Well, Jesus would be high and lifted up, and he's speaking about the Old Testament as well, when, when people looked upon uh, what was lifted up with the serpent on it, they were being bit, mm -hmm. bitten, and if they looked upon that, that was a type of Christ who would be lifted up. So there's no doubt that Jesus Christ, and this is one of the reasons for, for rediscovering the cross, because our faith is historic. Yes. That this is not just a myth, total myth, like nothing happened. God made history in Jesus Christ. We believe in the incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the Word became flesh. And so we go through, you know, we're not just Gnostics, everything's just spiritual. Mm. They're saying, no, no, we know what love is like, we know what the Father's love is like in the face of Jesus Christ, in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, who wasn't jumped by a bunch of people and murdered. Nobody took Christ's life, nobody. Christ laid down his life. Other people participated in what he wanted so that we might be set free and redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross. And when we understand that more deeply, may we all come into that more deeply and just joy, you know, meditating upon this whole thing, the exaltation of the cross, you really ask yourself, do I do that? Yes. Do, do I meditate? We have a lot of crosses, but do I look at the cross? Mm -hmm. Do I look at him upon that cross and, and just open myself up? Lord, 
I'm lost in wonder in time mm -hmm. and space when I survey. Are we surveying the cross? You know, mm -hmm. that beautiful song. When I survey the cross of Christ, my richest gain I count but loss. I pour contempt on my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that are charming me most, I sacrifice them to his love. Look at his love. And, and but do I do that? Am I taking mm -hmm. time? I need to take more time. I mean, so this is, it's convicted me about that, to take the time to do that, to meditate upon the cross, open yourself up, because it is this encounter, it's this love relationship, and you can either f never fathom the depths of the cross of Christ. Am I making time to look at him upon the cross? Well, and you think about all of the images that we look at in our life. Yeah. All the screens that we're in, all of, you know, how many hours we sit in front of tel the television, are we reading the Word of God? Are we meditating on His scriptures to us? Are we reflecting? So that, you know, and I know that there are traditions um, in Christianity where they don't right. want to have Jesus on the cross right. because they believe He's resurrected. Well, he, he has resurrected, and He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. But for us on this journey of our living, for me, and we were in the Episcopal Church and we always had okay. a, a crucifix, which was beautiful, because you know what, in this life, I'm going through some sufferings and miseries and trials. Do I believe I'm gonna be triumphant? Do I believe that, that this, how am I gonna do this? Where am I gonna get the strength to do this? Where am I gonna get the hope to do this? Where am I gonna get the peace to endure through this trial, through this tribulation? When you gaze upon the cross and you know his love and you know his peace, and you look at him and there are moments when I know he's gazing back and it just pierces your soul. It changes you for all eternity. So it's kind of like, but we have to take time. We have to step back. We have to reflect. And part of our problem in our living is nobody's reflecting. We're all going and doing and being and going and doing and being. Well, that's why we're doing this Monday. <clears throat> You've got six days. Mm -hmm. Do you even know what the exaltation of the cross of Christ is? Go to the website. If you don't have a cross or crucifix, you get it. If you have them, when was the last time you spent two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes mm. just being there? Say, I want to be still. I want to know that you're God. You can never exhaust this love that Christ did upon the cross. We have a comment here. I don't think that I truly understand how brutal the cross really is. Our way of life is so far removed from that type of event. I pray that God will show me what that suffering really means. Goldie from Georgia. And you know, yeah, it, it, it's torturous. There are people that have written mm -hmm. upon this, uh, that form of torture and what goes on physically and emotionally. But, but Jesus wasn't killed by strangers. So there was that pain mm -hmm. of, you're my child. You right. might be a Roman centurion and a soldier. It might be Jewish people that don't understand. You, his children killed him. He knows each one personally and intimately. That suffering, that pain, you know the rejection of your own children. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that abandonment. A, and that's an important point, is that the cross is not only physical suffering, but it's suffering at every level. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we can't fathom the depths of that suffering and the rejection. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, we often say, he, you know, he said, I must suffer many things, I'll die. On the third day, I'll be raised up. I will rise. We forget in one of those sayings, he says, I will be rejected. Ow, pain. Mm -hmm. He was rejected by his own people. His own people knew him not. That, that rejection is a part of the cross. He experienced all that. He swallowed all that for us. And he exhausted all that suffering that we might be able to say there's no suffering that I'm experienced that Christ has not suffered upon the cross and he swallowed it up and he is victorious. And in the Gospel of John, the cross is not only his suffering and pain, it's his glory. It's victory, that the cross is victory. Mm -hmm. That everything has been swallowed up, the world, the flesh, the devil, all the things that we battle, all the ways that Satan and our own fleshliness, our own poor decisions seek to take our life and land us in hell. He shut the joys of hell. Shut your mouth, hell. And he shut it. I love my children. He loves you. And he wants to set us free. 
We have a comment. It said, all merit was won on the cross of Christ, and only by participating in the sufferings of the cross can we truly hope to be purified. And this is Roger from Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to read, um, this was in the Magnificat. It says, the exaltation of the cross stems from the truth that apart from the cross, there is no ladder by which we can get to heaven. And that's St. Rose of Lima, which is really true. You know, we, we think, how, how is this going to happen? What am I going to do? Am I, I've accepted Jesus. All my problems are solved. Everything's going to be hunky-dory. And that is not true. That's a false gospel, yeah. right? There will be sufferings. There yeah. will be trials. There will be tribulations. But Jesus is going to be with you every step of the way, giving you grace and peace and courage and to fortify you and strengthen you. Mm. And, you know, like even when we go into our sanctuaries, our bodies, we are telling our bodies what they're doing. When, the, when they process with the cross down and they're, it's high yeah. and lifted up and it's beautiful, I bow. Why, why do I bow? Oh, that's just a religious thing. No, I bow because I'm telling my body, my spirit, we're surrendering. Jesus is Lord. Yeah. Jesus is the King. And then we gaze at the crucifix during the Mass. Are you gazing upon the crucifix in ways that you, every single time you go to Mass, that you can exalt the cross in your heart, in your, in your spirit, and that it would have a manifestation and a witness in your own life and in the lives of the people that you're with. To exalt is to be filled with enthusiasm, with, with, with great joy, like Our Lady. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit. It's, it's rejoicing, it's dancing, it's spinning for God my Savior because He who is mighty has done a great thing for me. Holy is his name. That's exalting. You're lifting up the rank of the Lord. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You say that he's cursed, but he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Are we filled with that? Mm. Gaze upon the cross. Say, teach me, Lord. Holy Spirit, teach me. Mother Mary, pray for me that I might love Jesus as you loved him. You are beneath the cross. The other women beneath the cross. St. John beneath the cross. The centurion puts a, a sword in his side. Blood and water spills out, and he's converted to this Jesus Christ. No man has ever died like this man. Jesus dying for you and for me. Let us exalt him, mm. especially this Saturday. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, we're going to go to Rome to check in with beautiful Joan Lewis. Now, Joan's going to be sharing a beautiful reflection on the feast of the exaltation of the cross. Joan? Well, greetings from the Eternal City, and what a thought-provoking focus and question today. What does the feast of the exaltation of the cross mean to me and to the Church? Well, you know, I'd heard of this feast day many, many years ago, but knew little about it. And I began to learn a lot more when I was made a dame of the Constantinian Order of St. George. Now, for the Order, the Exaltation of the Cross is one of the biggest feast days of the year, and it is celebrated with a very, very beautiful liturgy. Now, there's legend that says there's a link between the Roman Emperor Constantinian and the Constantinian order. And after all, it was Constantine's mother, St. Uh, Helena, who found, who went to Jerusalem in the fourth century. And she was looking for all the holy places associated with Jesus's life and, his, and principally his death. Now, the Emperor Constantine, once he knew that his mother, she's credited, of course, with finding the true cross and also the burial site of Jesus. And so her son, Constantine, decided to erect a church over the area to encompass these sites. Thus, the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre was built and it was dedicated on September the 13th, 335. And then the very next day, on September the 14th, the cross that Helena had found years earlier 
on that same date was brought in into the basilica. Now, a cross, we all know what a cross is, but this, what she found, was not just any cross with two pieces of wood put together by some Roman slave on which a Christian would probably die. This was the cross on which our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, died. He died for our sins. He died for our salvation, to gain our salvation with God the Father. And this was the cross of the Good Shepherd, redeeming his people, of the Good Shepherd, opening the door of heaven to give us a second chance at salvation. So venerating the cross and exalting the cross having a feast day in its honor, this is absolutely mandatory. Now let me read you something I read a few years back, uh, a Franciscan reflection. The cross is today the universal image of Christian belief. Countless generations of artists have turned it into a thing of beauty to be carried in procession or even worn as jewelry. To the eyes of the first Christians, it had no beauty. It stood outside too many city walls, decorated only with decaying corpses, as a threat to anyone who defied Rome's authority, including Christians who refused to sacrifice to Roman gods. So on those very, very beautiful words, um, I leave you. Make the sign of the cross as often as you can. Time's up here. Back to you. Joan, a beautiful teaching and devotion. Thank you for that gift. A pope said to a newly ordained priest, as this new priest met with him, the Holy Father took out his pectoral cross and he says, who do you see on this? And the priest said, Holy Father, it's, it's our Lord. And then the pope turned it over and said, who do you see on the back of the cross? And he said, I don't see anyone on the back of the cross. And the pope said to this priest who I know, that's where you go. That's where you go. Next time we look at the crucifix upon our neck, we kiss Jesus, look on the back or beyond the cross. Can we say, I've been crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. I no longer live. But the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and who loves me. I've been crucified with Christ. One of the best ways to exalt the cross is to take the cross, to get up on, on the cross with Christ. So thank you. Thank you for your comments today and join us uh, for an interview with Kelly Mantone. She'll be sharing with us about finding joy as a special need parent. That'll be Wednesday and that will be Thursday. So God bless you and all of your loved ones. You're an important part of the EW10 family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.